Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Boy, look here. Whatever seeds you plant, when they give fruit, go out there and pick them. Boy, look here. When you plant some seeds and it give fruit, you need to go out there and pick them seeds. Boy, let me tell y'all what happened. Look, I want to say about seven years ago, and I'm going to use this guy's name. I don't care. I don't care. He can't whoop me. I was. I had a. I had a farming. I had a general foreman named Bond. Screw his first name, I don't care. But I knew his last name was Bond. And I remember seven years ago, I went, I said, man, I'm gonna go talk to Bond because his supervisors treat me like trash. I go in the office, I said, Bond, can I talk to you for a second? He said, what you got? I said, listen, man, this supervisor that you got me working for, I said, man, I don't wanna cause a commotion and get the union involved. I said, man, bro, he constantly riding me. I said, man, he right, he trying to write me up for nothing. He said, what's your name? I said, Gibson. He said, oh, you the one he been telling me about. That's taking forever to get set up. Not doing enough work. Talking back. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh. He said, whatever he say, I'm going to side with him. And then what he said, this is what this man told me. He said, if you go over my head, ain't nobody out here going to help you. So you're going to get out there and get back to work. That's what he told me. Boy, that's what he told me. I couldn't do nothing but take my pole behind back out there and get back to work. That's, that, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. Boy, look here. I just left the gas station getting gas, and I seen a guy I used to work with. He said, Gip, let me tell you something. He said, do you remember Bond? I said, yeah, how can I forget him? He said, boy, they got rid of him. I saw, man, what happened? He said that he said they got a supervisor. One of the welders had set something on fire. They caused ten million dollars worth of damage. They set something on fire in the electrical room. Boy, they, they caught so much stuff on fire. They told the he, see he's a general foreman. They told the general foreman. They told their supervisor instead of us firing y'all, we gonna put you back on your tools. Oh Lord, they gonna put them back on their tools. Boy, when they look, the supervisor was fine with. He went back on his tools. But boy, that general farmer, he couldn't fall from grace. He couldn't fall from grace because he was so proud. Look, 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 he was so proud. He had just bought him a Cummins diesel truck. Boy, he was proud, boy, he was proud of that truck. Head held high, yes sir. Boy, he fell from grace. And oh, what a great fall it was. He said, I can't go back on my tools, man. Oh, you going, you going. And they put him on his tools, and they had they had him working for a guy that he used to write up. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. He went in there and told the people, I resigned. He gave up his pension. He gave up his 401k. He gave up his 15 or 20 years of seniority. Gone. Because pride was eating him alive. You know how they say pride goeth before the fall? No, sir. The fall came before the pride. He held strong. And now he's working. See, I'm going to tell you what happened with guys like that. In South Mississippi, we have shipyards that stretch from Florida all the way to Louisiana. We got nothing but shipyards. When you touch down in Texas, it ain't nothing but oil field work. All right? Now, in a town I'm in, Jackson Harrison County, see, you got the big shipyard down here in Jackson County called Ingle Shipbuilding. You can look them up. They build nothing but the, they build nothing but Navy vessels, destroyers, aircraft carriers. That's all they build. And, and right up under them, you got all of the medium-sized shipyards like Gulf Ship, Austin, Bollinger, Halter. But let me tell you what happened. When them guys fall from grace, they run to a small town called Bayou Labatra, Alabama. Now, Bayou Labatra, Alabama, they literally got 15 small shipyards over there, and they'll pay them about $23, $24 an hour. And it never fails. When these big wigs fall from grace, they run over there to Bayou Labatra to hide from everybody. It never fails. It never fails. One day you're at the top, next day, next thing you know, it comes crashing down. Be careful. Be careful when you're climbing that ladder. 
that you don't know who you're gonna have to pass on your way back down. But I was amusing to my ear when that man told me that, uh, when that man told me that I offered to buy his gas. Boy, look here, that was good news from a far country. When I heard that, I said, yes, sir. Uh, he getting a taste of his own medicine. What goes around, boy, look here, whatever seed you plant, whatever, look, he been watering that seed for eight years. And yes, sir, uh, he, he marched himself out of that gate. He fell from grace. That's like another guy. It's a guy I'm working with right now at this shipyard. He got fired. He told me, he said, man, I had a brand new 3500 Duramax and my wife had a brand new Tahoe. He said, he, that's what he told me. He said, Gibson, when I fell from grace, I lost everything. I lost my good insurance. I lost that 3500 Duramax and my wife lost that Tahoe. He fell from grave. Put your dog on head down. Boy, look here. Boy, look here. I want y'all to see something. That shipyard over there, not that one right there, not that one. You see wave over there, y'all see them all them shops and them big cranes. Boy, look here. If you ever, way like that, not that one, the one way like that. If you ever hire in out there, you get you a white hat, them boys think they live next to God out there. Boy, you hear me? Boy, you hear me? Listen, here, listen, here. Boy, look, they get that white hat. They come to work with starch jeans. The women come to work with tight clothes. It's Sodom and Gomorrah out there. And I'm so glad I'm gone. Look, nothing wrong with that job. You can go over there and make you about you can go over there and make you thirty dollars an hour. Get you some Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance. Get you some uh, get you a retirement plan going on. You can work seven days a week and bring home about eleven hundred dollars a week. You can get you some good credit. You can connect with the bank. They'll finance you a house. They'll finance you a truck, and they'll pay for your kids to go to college. But boy, look here, when you sign on the dotted line for that house, you sign on the dotted line for that truck, when you sign on the dotted line for that retirement plan, when you sign on the dotted line for that health insurance, when you sign on the dotted line for them to pay for your kids' college tuition, you putting on gold handcuffs, and you better not say nothing but yes, sir, no, sir, and I'm working the weekend, sir. And when them guys become supervisors, they think they living next to God. But listen here. When them guys, look, 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 look. 90% of the people are living paycheck to paycheck. But when those guys move up to supervision, their loans just get bigger. They get more vacation time. But it's all crabs in the bucket pulling one another down. And it's so sad. Well, I used to cry myself to sleep every night. It ain't what you know, it's who you blow. I'm going to say it one more time. It ain't what you know when you're working out there, it's who you blow. If you blow good, you move up good. Boy, look here. I had this one, look, I had a superintendent was 26 years old. He went from welding. He went from work leading. He went from farming. He went from general farming. And then he went to superintendent. He told me, he said, Gip, I would always win. He said, Gip, I'm the type of guy, I'd take your woman and take your job. I said, explain. This is what he told me. This is what came out his mouth. I'm going to give you the PG rated version. He said, I kiss behind on the job. I'd take your job that way. He said, and I eat behind at the house. I'd take your woman that way. It reminded me of a story of a monkey I heard 10 years ago. The guy, look. It was this guy, I'm gonna give y'all this story and I'm gone. It was this guy that had a pet monkey. So one day he brought the pet, look, the guy used to bring the pet monkey to work with him every single day. And then one, one day, that guy got up, went to the bathroom, and that pet monkey put that welding shield on and started welding better than he, better than he was welding. So man, that guy figured out, all I gotta do is bring this pet monkey to work with me and I ain't got to do nothing. Well, one day, boy, look here, let me tell you something. One day, the supervisor walked up on him and caught him sleep. He said, hey, what you doing? You sleep. He said, oh, but my work getting done. He said, well, who doing? He said, well, who over there welding since you right here sleep? That supervisor walked over there and seen the monkey welding. They fired, look, 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 look. They fired him. They fired him and kept the monkey. 
Boy, look here, that supervisor thought he was slick. He said, I'ma show, I'ma show this monkey how to do my job so I can sit down. And boy, I say about four months later, that guy showed that monkey how to do everything. Boy, look here, the monkey called his owner one day. He called him, he said, hey, Tony, yeah, you can have your job back. I'm supervisor now. He took the supervisor job. And boy, look, the general foreman seen that the monkey was doing the supervisor job. So the general foreman felt as though he was going to fire the supervisor, get a monkey to supervise the job. Then he was going to teach the monkey how to be a general foreman. And boy, he did it well. So look here, the monkey, the, he taught that monkey how to be a general foreman real good. The superintendent seen it. That superintendent got rid of the general foreman, made the monkey the general foreman, and then, look, the superintendent started teaching the monkey everything he know. But lo and behold, that monkey was climbing. That monkey was climbing, you hear me? And that's exactly what that guy did. He climbed all the way to the top. It ain't what you know. It's who you can blow.